here we are, C2E review, setting up some interviews. Everyone's grabbing a beer before I start chatting to them, and I'll see how we go with it all. Look at this beautiful location, guys. We've got a beautiful grassy area here. I'll do a quick tour for it later. I'm just stalling for time while people come back. So I'm here with Carly, pretty good beers. I'm here with, oh my goodness, I called him Mark at the Beer and Barbecue Festival. It's not Mark, it's Tony. How? How did I get that? Troy's busy, so we'll come back. I'm enjoying uh, Blue Skies Green Grass. Now, it depends how I cut this video, is when you'll see this review. And right now, I'm rambling, drinking a beer. <laughs> C2E here with Tony. I called you Mark at the Beer and Barbecue did Festival, you? didn't I? I remember that. I still cringe. Troy's busy. Mommy. And Tony's going to talk to us about this new Mommy. East Coast IPA, Green Grass Mommy. Blue Skies. Or is that the other way around? Mommy. Scott on, you got it right the first time. There we go. Yeah. Tell us what what went into developing this. I know you just told me five minutes ago I should have been recording, but. Could have recorded I know, it would have been perfect. <laughs> No, really, I, I wanted to create a beer that was kind of a bit of a contrast between mm -hmm. West Coast style and mm -hmm. to show the other side of, you know, IPAs. And so, East Coast IPAs, Nipahs, Hazies are all going that big fruit bold, fruit forward type mm -hmm. flavour. I did not grab. And I kind of wanted to create a beer that was still on trend with what, the way we go about yep. making our beers, being approachable and yep. you know sessionable. Yep. Um, and hence why Blue Skies Green Grass uh, mm -hmm. came about was that East Coast IPA. Yep. Showing that real fruit salad, fruit forward. Yep. Uh, with a nice little lingering bitterness that still reminds. You that you're drinking yeah, IPA, yeah. but not as fruity and um, I suppose fruit forward as like your hazies and your neepers and so on and so forth. Do you notice the trend is more West Coast IPAs everyone makes other than the East Coast, or is that just me looking for more West Coast? And oh, look, I think it, it comes down to personal preference, to mm -hmm. be fair, and I think West Coast is kind of like you know that that, that big where the craft beer movement started, yeah, yeah, yeah. The West Coast of America, yeah, yeah, so yeah. That's kind of like that first beer that you have a crack at, as yeah, a brewer, yeah, it's like you want to make it nice, yes, West yes. Coast IPA, mm -hmm. so. Part of the reason why I'm creating this beer once again is yep. kind of to show that contrast. We've got our number 14 yes. uh, IPA, which is our West Coast style. So try that one if you haven't, guys. That's your one. Your, that's your staple. Correct. Your staple. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it's, the one I always go back to. Yeah. And we're just like, I don't want to review anything. I just want to drink a good beer and I go to the number 14. Yeah. That's, that's that, that plus our, you know, our, um, our black IPA. Yep. My two favourites. Yep. Um, yeah, and I basically having that. that West Coast IPA, that number 14, yes. as a contrast to show you, hey, there's these two styles of IPAs fighting out well, together. A good little experiment I should do is grab your West Coast and grab your yeah, East Coast yeah. and see the different flavours as well. Let's talk about this place. You've made up the backyard, you've, you've yeah, done yeah. it really nice. Thanks. I was I called it a, a beer garden, but it's not a beer garden, it's just a backyard, isn't it? That was the aim behind it, you know, you can't take all the credit for the backyard, that's mm -hmm. for sure. But um, at the same time, we just kind of wanted to have a place that was kind of inspired by going around to make yep. sure. Yeah, yeah. And like creating suburban environment yeah you know? so quite lucky with um you know what we've done with inside yes um, and then yeah and then being able to open this place up at the back big and spacious as well yeah. had you guys during covid were you okay here during covid yeah we actually opened up after to be fair so i'm trying to work out how long you've been here because i noticed a lot of people having their first birthday yeah. parties i went hang on you're around that time it's as just well. come up september september yep. is when we opened so we've been here just uh, just over six months yep so oh, so seven been now. but you've so, done so much to the place as well yeah cheers yeah well it's kind of a bit of you know we've had the uh, this space since november 2019 mm -hmm. Um, just a whole lot of working through and getting to yep. this point. Um, but yeah, we kind of aimed at September being, you know, and, and that aim of being, you know, let's be one of the first ones back out there. Yeah, yeah. You know, when we're able to get back out and start yeah. enjoying um, life again. You know, there's restrictions and that sort yeah. of stuff and everyone's playing with that at the moment. So Have you been able to know, switch off since different. September? Uh, it's been fun. Because you seem yeah, busy. Yeah, yeah. Like, I've seen yeah. you out there, you're doing a bit of gardening right now. Yeah, it's like, hang on, he's a brewer. He yeah, doesn't yeah. do the gardening, but nah. you're doing a bit of everything yeah, well, here, it's juggling like around. Any, any sort of small business, yeah. Yep. You kind of do it all yourself, yeah. Yes. You can't afford to pay anyone to do anything. <laughs> That's <you don't>. right. <laughs> I just did the fringe, and I just did 70 reviews in three weeks, and yeah, I, do yeah. the, I do the writing, I do the photo things, I do the posting. I do. Everything. It's one of those things, yeah. yeah. But you is. love it, and it doesn't yeah, feel like do. a job, does it? Correct. And I'm still mixing it with my day job, to be fair, as well. So I still work three days a day. Really? My office job. Wow. Wow. Do this on the side as well. So, so yeah. with winter coming up, do you have inspirations for a winter type of beer? Uh, yeah, we got some stouts coming down. The okay, line. so that's uh, that's definitely where I love to play. When yeah, I'm really, the, yeah, darker the darker beers. Yeah, that's um, what I'm just sort of 
yeah. going into now. My wife pushed me in that direction. Yeah. And yeah. the big chocolatey coffee flavours. It's, it's a like, delicious area to kind of get into as yeah. well. And like it kind of just suits the winter. Like it's an all year round beer, really. Yeah. really. Like, you know, there's no real perception of when you can drink stouts. Yeah, and that sort of stuff, yeah, yeah. It's just the way that we tend to associate dark beers with winter. And I, you know what I never do? I put all my stouts in the fridge. Should I leave them out of the fridge? Well, I, I'd probably say bring them out, you know, 10 or 20 minutes ah, before okay. you're about to drink them. Just let them warm up a little yeah. bit. Come to room temperature, not necessarily room temperature. Yeah. But you know, something a little bit warmer than you know, four degrees or Yeah, I got you, I got you. So yeah. So here we go. All right, guys, yeah. pop down, Suburban Brew. You'll see Troy or Tony. Yeah, Troy and Tony. Yeah. Troy and Tony. <laughs> <laughs> and was, I'm thinking Mark again. Yeah. Goodness gracious. Anyway, pop down, it's a gorgeous day. It's on Goodwood Road in Unley. Is it uh, Unley? No, nah, it's Goodwood. Just it's Goodwood. Train. It's yeah. just down from the showgrounds, guys. So yeah. pop down there. We'll just cut out that last bit. I'll enjoy this. Uh, it just released last week, wasn't it? Yeah, that's right. Yep. The East Coast IPA, guys. Yep. Keep it dry. Cheers, guys. Thanks, guys. Thanks, then, man. All right, thank you. Cheers.